Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is my first reading book haul of 2022. So I'm back to doing booktube videos. I'm not going to be doing a huge amount because um, obviously I do TikTok ones and I also do colouring and I talk a lot about books in my weekly vlog. However, I do have uh, eight books that I've added to my TBR this month, so I thought I'd show you them. Although, I think I've read two of them on there already. No, one of them. Okay. So the first one I picked up was this one. This is called uh, Witchfinders, a 17th century English tragedy by Malcolm Gaskell. So I'll read to the back. It says, by the spring of 1645, civil war had exacted a terrible toll upon England. Disease was rife, apocalyptic omens appeared in the skies, and idolat I can never say this word, idolat I idolaters were detected in every shire. In a remote corner of Essex, two obscure gentlemen began interrogating women suspected of witchcraft, triggered the most brutal witch hunt in English history. Witchfinders is a spellbinding study of how Matthew Hopkins, the Witchfinder General, and John Stern extended their campaign across East Anglia, driven by godly zeal, exploiting the anxiety and lawlessness of the times, and cheered on by ordinary folk as they extracted confessions of satanic packs, resulting in scores of executions. So, I'm interested in anything to do with uh, witchcraft and the occult, as well as religion in general. I think I'm just interested in everything, as you can see. This one was only three pounds in the works. I do love the works. So I don't know if it's any good. There are some illustrations, which is interesting. So that's quite an interesting one to add to the, the um, TBR. Now the next one is one I bought for Paul for his birthday. Again, it was three pounds from the works. He just picked it and I said, you can have whatever you want. And this is What Lies Buried, a forensic psychologist, true stories of madness, the bad and misunderstood by Kerry Danes. As you can see, he's read it because he's cracked the spine. Anyway, so this says, when you work in forensic psychology, you quickly learn that when violence does happen, there is always more to it than meets the eye. Kerry Danes, leading forensic psychologist, has spent her career investigating the actions of convicted men and women. The classic question she is asked is, are they mad or are they bad? But this question rarely tells us the whole story. Kerry's quest is to uncover what lies buried beneath the most strange and disturbing behaviour. In a new book, she opens the case files of some of her most perplexing clients, including a young murderer who says he hears voices telling him to kill, a teacher who daubs children in red paint, and an aspiring serial killer who faints at the sight of blood. And this is true. This is all real. These are real people. Kerry provides an unflinching, enlightening and provocative insight into the minds of her clients, challenging our notions of who and what is dangerous. Expect to encounter intriguing characters, unlikely twists and turns, and Kerry's trademark dark humour. Now Paul has finished this, he says it's really good. So my Stephen King book for the month is The Stand. This is uh, February's book. It's 1350 pages or something like that. It's nearly 1400 pages long. So this is the expanded version. Um, and basically it says, first come the days of the plague, then come the dreams. Dreams that warn of the coming of the dark man, the apostate of death, his worn down boot heels tramping the night roads, the warlord of the charnel house and prince of evil. His time is at hand, his empire grows in the west, and the apocalypse looms. Ooh, love me a bit Stephen King. Yeah, it's going to take a good chunk of time because it is... Let's just see if you had enough copies you could build a house out of it. Got some from the charity shop next. Two from the charity shop. I think they were a pound a into the water, pound each. Um, this was from the gosh, what was the shop called? I think it's called Sense. It's the new it's a new charity shop in Newport. All pretty much all books are a pound. Um, into the Water Paul Hawkins. Haven't read this one. Um, and it says, I need you to call me back, it's important. Just days before her sister plunged to her death. Jules ignored her call. Now Nell is dead. They say she jumped, and Jules must return her return to her sister's house to care for her daughter, and to face the mystery of Nell's death. But Jules is afraid of her long buried memories of the old mill house of this small town that is drowning in secrecy, and of knowing that Nell would never have jumped. Woo! Yeah. 
haven't read that one. Did read Girl on the Train when it first came out. Enjoyed that one. Uh, the next one is Anyone for Seconds. Just Desserts and Second Chances. This is by Laurie Graham. Life has been going downhill for ex-TV chef Lizzie Partridge ever since she threw a chocolate mousse at the house of Midlands this morning <laughs> live on air. Her partner Tom has left her and her newspaper cookery column has been axed. Can things get any worse? Probably. In a desperate bid for sympathy and attention, she runs away from the gas bill and the mouse under the sink, and in a wet and wintry Aberystwyth, she experiences a brush with her past and a glimmer of new prospects. So when her nephew's TV producer girlfriend has the bright idea to reunite her with a former nemesis, the target of the moose attack, in a new show, it looks as though her luck might be about to change. Will Lizzie rejoin the upper crust? Or will her renaissance only pr 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 bleh, prove only half-baked? So I like this kind of book. They can only take a few, a few hours to read. A couple hours, if that. Verity by Colleen Hoover. This is the first ever Colleen Hoover book I've bought. So those of you who love Colleen Hoover, I know I should probably read some more. And I'll let you know if I do or if I want to. Verity. Um, so if you don't know, Lowen Ashley is a struggling writer on the brink of financial ruin when she accepts the job offer of a lifetime. Jeremy Crawford, husband of best-selling author Verity Crawford, has hired Lowen to complete the remaining books in a successful series his injured wife is unable to complete. Lowen arrives at the Crawford home, ready to sort through years of Verity's notes and outlines, hoping to find enough material to get her started. What Lowen doesn't expect to uncover in the chaotic office is an unfinished autobiography Verity never intended for anyone to read. Page after page of bone-chilling admissions, including Verity's recollection of the night her family was forever altered. Lowen decides to keep the manuscript hidden from Jeremy, knowing its contents could devastate the already grieving father. But as Lowen's feelings for Jeremy begin to intensify, she recognises all the ways she could benefit if she were to read his if he were to read his wife's words. After all, no matter how devoted Jeremy is to his injured wife, a truth this horrifying would make it impossible for him to continue loving her. So from what I gather, this is a bit of a change for Colleen Hoover who normally writes love stories and romances but uh, there's romance in here I'm sure. Uh, next uh, another one for Paul but we're both going to read it so I'm including it in this and I have put it on my TBR list. This is James Patterson writing with Casey Sherman and Dave Wedge and it's the last days of John Lennon the assassination that changed a generation. There we go. So a global superstar. In the summer of 1980, ten years after the breakup of the Beatles, John Lennon signed with a new label, ready to record new music for the first time in years. An obsessed fan. A dangerously obsessed fan. Mark David Chapman had become fixated on murdering his former hero. In December 1980, he boarded a flight from Hawaii to New York with a handgun stowed in his luggage. He was never going home again. A murder that stunned the world. It also changed the world forever. Enriched by exclusive interviews with Lennon's friends and associates, including Paul McCartney, The Last Days of John Lennon is the greatest true crime story in music history, as only James Patterson can tell it. So yeah, this is obviously about the murder of John Lennon. So we are huge Beatles fans in this household. We're just huge music fans in general, so we are looking forward to this book. And the last book I bought in January is only had like eight books. It's not bad. Go me! is the Stephen King book for March. I got this, If It Bleeds, from Tesco. It's £5. Pound. We've got it the same day as we've got James Patterson. So this is four new stories um, from Stephen King. So, news people have a way... Ha, news people have a saying, if it bleeds, it leads. Okay. Following a horrific explosion at school, Holly Gibney of the Finders Keepers Detective Agency notices something suspicious about the TV reporter who was first on the scene. In this riveting title story, Holly sets out to discover what he is hiding in her first solo crime case. Dancing along this standalone sequel to The Outsider are three more irresistible long stories. Mr Harrigan's phone sees young Craig introduce a curmudgeonly retired businessman to the wonders of the smartphone. The Life of Chuck is a three-act life story told in reverse order about a man whose face appears on a billboard and Rat sees a struggling author head to a remote cabin in the woods of North Maine where a deal-making rodent offers him a life-changing pact. 
So now I am set up for March as well as February with my Stephen King. So I'm not doing Missy, the binge readers, Stephen King a thon. She's reading, they're rereading a lot of books I've already read. So I, I don't want to do that. I want to read new stuff or stuff I haven't read in a long time, stuff I don't own uh, to add to my Stephen King collection. So this one. Can't wait. So there we go. Let me show you the books apart from the stand, which is far too big to hold, I'm sure. Yeah, there is a lot of books. I'm still holding them the wrong way around. There we go. Let me show you. Oh, and that are all the books I bought in January. I wonder how we'll do in February. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you've read any of these, let me down down in the comments below. Obviously, when I do read them, I will let you know in a reading wrap-up. And I will see you in that video very, very soon. Goodbye, everybody.